Hey guys, welcome to our concrete pouring video where we're going to show the process of pouring the concrete. Because we recognize pouring concrete can be a pretty daunting task, so what we want to do is we just want to show the whole process from start to finish. That way you have a better idea of what's going to be all involved in it. So just to start off with, we're going to make sure we have the tools, the materials, and the hardware that we're going to need in order to make sure this is a smooth process. So to start off with, we got our large mixing tank along with something to mix it with. Uh, we use a shovel, but it really can be anything that's useful for you. Uh, after that, we have a small wood block, steel trowels, a rubber mallet for tamping, uh, gloves, chop towels, Allen wrench set, a blade for cutting open the concrete, a measuring tape. Uh, we have our mixing cups, we have our mixing sticks, a uh, brush to clear off any debris. We have a masking tape, we have a mask, we have some glasses to protect ourselves. We have some water for mixing up the concrete, making sure it's the right consistency. And then from our MR1 crate, we have our Y-axis rail stiffeners, and then the hardware that's required to attach them. Uh, as for the concrete itself, what we want to do is we want to make sure we have the right amount of concrete as well as the right type. And so right now, we, what we're using, we're using eight 60 pound bags of concrete, or you could also use six 80 pound bags of concrete, as long as it comes out to the same amount. Uh, for the type of concrete, basically what we're looking for is we're looking for a high strength concrete, uh, as opposed to like a lightweight or a fast, fast drying concrete. Uh, this doesn't have to be anything too fancy. And you can basically just go pick this up from your local hardware store, and that'll be the right the right concrete to use. After that, we're going to want to use our fully assembled MR1 base plate. That way we're not have to worry about assembling it while our concrete is curing. After that, we're going to walk over to our MR1 assembly itself. There's a couple things we're going to need to do here before we actually pour concrete. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove these mesh drains from the top of the concrete. That way they don't get anything on them. Uh, and the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to tape up the drains themselves. And what we did with that tape is we just kind of made sure we went around the edges and got a complete seal of that tape. That way no concrete dust or stray concrete actually gets down into the drains. And we normally add about two or three layers of tape just to add a little bit of extra strength. And then after that, we're ready to proceed on to the next step. All right, for this step, we have our mixing tub, we have our concrete poured in, and we have something to stir with. And what we strongly recommend for this step is we recommend having a buddy or someone to help you. That way one person can pour the concrete into the chip tray while the other person mixes into the next batch. Because what's important with this step is uh, there's a timer after we start pouring water into the concrete. Uh, this is really critical because over the next three or four hours, the concrete is going to cure and start to set. So what we want to be doing is we want to be continuously working. That way we can pour all of our concrete in and have it cure as one solid layer. All right, so for this next step, what we're doing is we're just trying to get the consistency of our concrete into where we want it. Uh, what we found is that some concretes can be drier than others. And so what, when five pints of water is poured into a 60 pound bag, Sometimes it ends up being way too dry or way too soupy. And if it's too too wet and too watery, it can also impact the strength of your concrete. And if it's too dry, you know, you can't really get it mixed around how you should, and it's not going to flow into all the areas that it needs to. Uh, so what we're doing here is we have a visual like representation of the concrete that we poured in. We poured one of our 60 pound bags of concrete. We've added our five pints to it. And we're just kind of looking to make sure that the consistency is kind of like a wet oatmeal, like kind of a thick, chunky oatmeal. So I'm kind of just running my fingers through it, making sure that it kind of has that nice feel to it. Uh, when I pick up a chunk to it, what I'm doing is I can kind of pat it out and I'm looking to hold it to the light and kind of get a nice shine off of that concrete there. That means there's going to be just the right amount of water. If it was dull or if it looked really sandy, that means it's still a little too dry and I need to add more. Now the other thing, key thing is that if I squeeze it or mold it, it's going to hold its shape. You can actually see the little finger indents that I've left. It's not, you know, it's not crumbling apart in my hands. It's not just dripping water off my hands. So that means it's just the right amount of consistency that we're looking for. Uh, you definitely want to make sure that you have your consistency down first before you start pouring and mixing the rest of your concrete. But definitely start off, start slow. Start off by getting this one bag poured first. Double check your consistency and double check to see if you need to add a little bit more water or leave a little bit more water out with your pours and get it down right. So that way you can just continuously keep um, adding concrete without having to do more. All right, welcome back. We just got done adding seven of our eight bags of concrete. Uh, this is the seventh bag right here. And what we've been doing as we've been pouring these bags in is we've been using a wooden trowel just to kind of spread everything around, make sure everything gets evenly distributed in our MR1 here. And we use a wooden trowel when we're moving everything around. That way it leaves a little bit of a rough surface as we're moving the concrete. What we want to do is we want to leave a little bit of a rough surface when mixing concrete. That way the water has room to come up and out of the concrete. 
Uh, if we use a steel trowel, what's going to happen is it's going to look nice, it's going to look pretty, but it's going to trap all that water underneath the surface there, and it's going to weaken your concrete a little bit. So as we go along, as we smooth out our concrete, what we're looking to do with the seventh bag here is we're looking to get about an eighth of an inch underneath these drains here. That way when we add epoxy later, we'll be able to bring it up flush with the drains and the coolant's going to be able to flow nicely into those drains. Uh, if you're not going to be using epoxy, which we don't really recommend, uh, you'll, what you'll want to do is you want to level it off now with the concrete. So with the seventh and eighth bag, after you put the base plate in, you're going to want to level it off with the drains. Uh, another thing we've been doing to make sure that all the concrete is nice and secure is we've been using a uh, rubber mallet to tamp the concrete as we go. And what we mean by tamping is just kind of coming through and lightly tapping on the sides and the bottom of the base plate. So just, just a light tap. And what that does is it gets the concrete to settle. It removes any air pockets that might be trapped down in there, as well as bringing water to the surface, which is what we want. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to finish spreading out, we're going to finish tamping off the seventh bag, and then we're going to move on to our base plate, and we're going to get it set down in the concrete to add our eighth. All right, we just poured in our seventh bag. We kind of got everything leveled off for the most part here. Now it's time to start moving on to the Y-axis rail stiffeners. Uh, the stiffener is going to hold everything nicely in place, and we made sure that they are all correct earlier in the steps. And what we're going to do now is we're going to make sure that the slots are mostly lined up with threaded holes here on the side of the rail before we sink it into the concrete. And when we start sinking it in, we're going to hold it up against the y-axis rail, and we're going to go back and forth in a sawing motion. And that sawing motion is going to get it really sunken down into the concrete here and allow the concrete to flow around those arrows. So I'm just gonna adjust it till it's just below flush of the Y-axis rail. I'm gonna make sure all my slots are lined up. And then I'm gonna take one screw and put it on the back side here, just to hold it in position while we're working. Then I'm gonna take another screw and put it on the front. Eventually, very soon, there we go, great. So that'll hold the rail stiffener in. We can go ahead and tighten that as we go. And what the plan is, is we want one rail stiffener on each side of the Y-axis rails. That'll allow the Y-axis rails to get, have plenty of rigidity as we're machining. Uh, after we get the Y-axis rails in, we can come through with our mallet and keep on tamping. We wanna keep on tamping to bring up the water, bring it out of the concrete, so that way we have good strong concrete and we don't get this milky finish afterwards. It's all about bringing that water to the surface. So go ahead and give, give the tray a few taps underneath and just use shop towels, you know, any old rags, any old towels you might have laying around and just try to soak up all the water that comes up. Really what you want to do is you want to tamp, soak up water, and tamp again until you get absolutely everything. All right, we're on to one of our last big steps here. Uh, now we're going to be taking the actual fully assembled base plate here, and we're going to be loading it into our machine. Before we pick it up and set it in, what we want to make sure is we want to make sure all of the Y-axis rails are completely wiped off to make sure they're free of debris or dust or anything like that. And we want to make sure that our scored line here on the MR1 is eight and nine sixteenths from the front of the machine. That'll make sure that when we slide this base plate in, it'll be exactly where we want it to be. So I'm gonna pick this up now. Get it lined up with my scored line and with the Y-axis rails. And then just like with the Y-axis rail stiffeners, we're going to be doing a sawing motion back and forth to really get it sunken down into the concrete. All right, we're the home stretch now. What we have is we have our eighth bag mixed up and put into our container here. Uh, we're probably not going to be using this entire eighth bag. Really what we have it left over for is for finishing touches. So what we're going to be doing with this leftover concrete here is we're going to be leveling out any low spots that we have 
and we're going to be making sure that we have a quarter inch gap for our base plate and we have an eighth inch gap for, for our drains. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look for any low spots in there. You can tell where the low spots are by any water that's coming up to the surface. That's a good indicator and that's where you need to add some more concrete. So I've got a little bit more coming up here on this front edge. So I'm just going to add a light amount of concrete just because we are getting close to being perfectly level all the way across. So we just want to add just a small enough amount to get to where we want to be. Uh, again, we're going to be using our wood block to smooth everything out. That wood block is going to ensure that we have a nice rough surface. It, it sounds strange to say, but that nice rough surface is going to make sure that all the water can leach up to the top of the concrete and make sure that we can soak it all up with towels like we need to. Otherwise, if we use a trowel, all it's going to do is it's going to smooth off that concrete and it's going to trap all that water underneath and make the concrete a little bit more brittle. So speaking of water, we're going to keep tamping. Tamping is always very important. Uh, we're going to make sure we bring all that water up to the surface. So you're going to want to be patient and do lots of tamping. So I'm, I'm still seeing water come up even after about a half hour ago when we poured. And so even coming up on this new concrete that I put in, we're still seeing water come up there. So just be patient with it. Absorb the water that comes up with. It's going to make sure your concrete is nice and strong later on. And make sure that your machine's going to run really well later. Cool. So while we, while we have our mallet for tamping, what we can go ahead and do is we can check our base plate positioners. Basically what we want to do is we want to make sure that all four quarters of our base plate positioners are touching the Y-axis rail. It is normal for there to be one set of quarters touching the rails and the other one not. What that means is that we just have, we just need to equalize the air gap between those corners. So let's say that these two corners are not touching properly and those two corners are touching. Well, we're going to want to find the one that is touching down on our Y-axis rail and the one that has the air gap. And we're going to want to tamp down on the base plate to equalize the air gap. So once the air gap is equalized, once those two are touching, that's when our base plate is going to be nice and level and we can continue on from there. So keep at it, be patient, go ahead, take your time on this step. You know, we have most of the concrete in. We just want to make sure all, everything is nice and smooth. We want to make sure that we have that quarter inch gap between the base plate and the eighth inch gap for the drain. If you are choosing not to use epoxy, you're going to want to use a lot more of this concrete here and go ahead and level off everything until it's flush with the, uh, with the drains. That'll make sure that all the cool that we use flows smoothly down into those drains and you're not getting any pooling later on. So. We're the home stretch, almost there. Uh, the last thing we need to do after this is go through and make sure that we have everything finalized, everything cleaned up, and we'll be all set. All right, here we are after the eighth bag of concrete. What we did with that eighth bag, we definitely did not use all of it. Um, what we did is we came in, we filled in all the low spots, anywhere there was water or anywhere that looked a little bit lower in some other areas. We used those to patch and fill that. And so while the concrete was curing, while that last little bit was curing, what we did is we came in and we tightened and inserted the rest of the screws on these y-axis stiffeners as well as just give the machine just kind of a general wipe down uh, we wanted to get the concrete while it was still wet and not fully cured that way it's much easier to clean and wipe off as well as kind of soak up any of the leftover surface water that was on here just to make sure that uh, we have a nice surface to work with when we start troweling uh, in order to know kind of when to start troweling your machine what we get what we usually do is we come and we do a thumb test so you can push down firmly with your thumb, and if it doesn't move and like less than an eighth of an inch, then we're ready to come through and we're ready to start troweling. And what troweling does, it's nice. It gives you a nice smooth finish at the end of your concrete, as well as help bring up any of the leftover surface water that's underneath. Uh, if you've never troweled before, it's pretty straightforward. All you pretty much do is you lay it flat, just to start off with, and you lift up that leading edge and just kind of glide it across the concrete. And then you pick it up, Coming back the other way, and glide back over. So you just do that a couple times, just to kind of smooth over the surface, just to kind of make sure everything is perfectly leveled out. Um, you know, if you do have coarser concrete like we do, it's all right to kind of take the trowel and press down on some of those larger pieces beforehand. That'll make sure that they're down a little further, so that way you don't catch it as you're going across the first time. There are some places where you're probably not going to be able to get very well, like the sides here. 
I'm um, just kind of doing the best that you can. It doesn't have to be completely perfect over here. Coolant is still going to be able to flow just fine. So here at Langmuir, we recommend letting the concrete cure for at least five days. Uh, that's going to give the strength we need to continue on with assembly. You know, if you try to move it or if you try to add on to the assembly before then, you kind of risk the strength of the concrete itself. And so while it's curing, we, we are going to leave the base plate positioners exactly where they're at. So that way the base plate can stay exactly where it's at. And we're going to leave the support tube in. That way everything can be held up from underneath and hold the weight of the concrete as it's carrying. Uh, you know, if you have any questions about this, feel free to rewatch this video as many times as you need. Even send us an email, call us if you have any questions before you pour concrete. We'd be happy to help. So thank you for watching the video.